Vikas Seshwati Rao also works as a professor in the department. His students are many students, his 12 students are worked in a different positions, different institutions as head of the department, as a scientist. Because the Usman City was felt very happy, such an eminent scientist, academician and administrator, he served for the Usman City, especially for motivating and enlightening the science, science faculty, especially the physics faculty in the Usman City. So in the Usman City, all the science departments are actively participating in the research activities. Those days they used to produce only one or one per paper or research paper only. So that was started with the series, uh, Dr. Suri Bhavantamgar only. So after that, now every teacher are producing at least minimum two research papers from the physics department, chemistry and other life science department and other faculties also. So that was initiated to the research activities in the department of science faculty. When he became as a vice chancellor, he gave a lot of inputs in Hyderabad. I think all of you know that Hyderabad is the hub for the research activities like ISET, CCMB, NIN, NRSA and DRDO. So, so many research activity centers are there in Hyderabad. With their support and help, the Usman is also, our faculty members, our research scholars, they are excelling in the academic, academics and also they are doing it. Physics is a very important subject. So, that subject was in the Sri Bhavanta was working in the, in the Osman city. So we know that everyday activities, I think everyone says that physics is the mother of all the science subjects. So it is really, we are very proud of Sri Bhavanta Garu. He worked in the Osman city. With his few words, I thank all the dignities of under dais and of the dais. Once again, I welcome you to the Osman city. With his few words, thank you, thank you very much. That we all of us as Usmanians are always grateful to the great contributions made by Dr. Suri Bhagavatamgaru as a teacher, researcher and an administrator. Thank you, sir. May I now request Dr. V. Bhujangaravaru, former DG DRDO, to please address the gathering. <coughs> Dr. Sri N. Indrasena Governor of Tripura. Guests of Honours, Dr. G. Pradesh Redigaru. Chairman DRDO, former Chairman DRDO, and also former Science Advisor Prashant Mutai, President of the ASL. Professor P. Ashmaliyaru, Registrar of Hispanic University, very prestigious university, and uh, the organizer S.V. Ramgaru, founder and director of this foundation, Ramadan Foundation, distinguished gathering, scientists from various institutions in uh, Hyderabad city and many friends and colleagues and students. A very good afternoon to all of you. First of all, I feel greatly honored to be part of this function. And uh, uh, I have some association indirectly with Professor Bhagavantam. When I was a student in Tirupati doing my MSc physics in 1970-72, he visited 1971 and we had a photograph with him. And he came to Visagapur, I mean, the Tirupati University, the Sri University, and gave that talk. And uh, one more thing is, his contribution is very high in many fields, but more so in crystallography, he has made a first imprint and also ultrasonics. And uh, uh, during his time as a PhD, he guided many people on one technique called wedge method in ultrasonics. Those days, ultrasonics we used to use, you know, normal crystal, PGMT crystal, and produce one frequency. But he made a wedge method in which, as the wedge size is changing, produce more frequencies. It became a very good tool for studying elastic constants of many materials, yeah. and that extended to liquids, crystals. And that's how he entered crystallography. When he was working with C.V. Raman in Calcutta, uh, C.V. Raman suggested to him what called crystallography using this wedge method and develop how to evaluate crystals. And that became very much needed later on in semiconductor research. And uh, in, uh, it is on his complete of 60th birthday, there was a program in his honor on crystallography. And one complete uh, uh, conference was held in Bangalore. 
and the proceedings are produced is honored in the photo and all that. I used to see that in the library. So uh, we know him as a great scientist at that time. And when he was a DRD chief, he started many laboratories. One of them is NSTL, for which I was the director. And though we used to celebrate his function every year, uh, even today, during this month. And in DRDO, uh, we have many ways of honor. We have honored him with the auditorium in Delhi. And uh, his contribution made to the DRDO was always uh, recognized. He's one of the forefathers in bringing DRDO to this level. Oh, uh, there is one society, Acoustical Society of India. I was one of one time. I was the president also. So they have a program. They give uh, once in two years for lifetime lifetime contribution to acoustics and the Acoustical Society Suri Bhagavatam Award. So I also received one time that award in 2013. It was a great honor to give such award because that was the highest award in that society. Even today it is given and of course it is a very active society. Every year we have continuous programs like that. And they also produce a journal, a post of India journal. It was all initiated during his time. Who I also know his uh, three sons, uh, Professor Ramakrishna, AAC, I had uh, met him, not, uh, I mean, whenever I went to the Department of Communication, I had some meeting him. Then Professor Black Balkshna from NGRA. He was a director when I joined DRDL. My first appointment was in DRD in Hyderabad. When I joined here, there was some requirement to go to NGRA. And I wrote to my professor, he said, go and meet Professor Balakrishna. I went, I went there, we had some requirement from NGRA support. He was very helpful that time. And, uh, and Professor Radhakrishna also from IT channel. And so I have some uh, knowledge that you know, they all really contribute a lot. And Professor Pragmatam, I can say, one of the highest distinguished scientists produced in the recent, say, 100 years. He has done such a good contribution. In respect of physics, chemistry, well, basically chemistry, his uh, degree. Then he changed over to physics and all that. That is happened at Andhra University, then the, the then uh, Sri, our uh, president. Uh, he was the vice chancellor there, Radha Krishna. He was given that kind of mission. And he was the youngest, uh, pro, youngest uh, professor. At the age of 28 years, it was very highly talked about it. So thank you for giving this opportunity for me. And uh, at the function, the very best. And uh, 100th year function also held in Usmania University. That time Sarshikar Rao was here. And I also came from Isaiapatnam, an invitation. My time and Amla State uh, Vice Chancellor uh, 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 Satyanarayanam, uh, no? he also came. Uh, so we all had in one of these articles, I don't know which article, but we had a very good function that day. Okay. Thank you for all giving opportunity and reminiscences of Professor Bhagavanta. I got the citation. Thank you. Yes, Murthy. As the director of IIT Hyderabad, your visionary leadership has been instrumental in establishing state-of-the-art laboratories and world-class facilities dedicated to the cutting-edge fields of autonomous vehicles, additive manufacturing, atom probe tomography, and metallurgy. These advancements have paved the way for groundbreaking discoveries and have propelled India's entry into advanced technologies. Your commitment to advancing research and education has significantly enhanced the institution's capabilities, fostering innovation, and preparing the research community to tackle the challenges of tomorrow. Can we please give another bigger round of applause for Professor B.S. Murtikaru for his outstanding contribution. With his pioneering research, he has pro he made prolific contributions of over 470 journal publications and mentorship of numerous PhD candidates. He is the recipient of the Shanti Swaroop Award in 2007 and the JC Bose Fellowship in 2018-23, which attests his enduring impact on the academic community. Russia on an official visit. So on his behalf, we have Director DRDL, Professor G.A.S. Murtigaru, who is going to receive the award. 
May I request G.S. Murthy Garu to please join us on the dais. Dr. Umalaneni Rajababu Garu, currently the Director General of Missiles and Strategic Systems at DRDO, has made significant contributions to India's defense sector. A graduate of mechanical engineering from Andhra University, he pursued further studies at IIT Kharagpur and earned an MBA from JNTU. His professional career spans over 35 years where he has been involved in the development of critical missile system for India's defense. We greatly acknowledge his contribution in the field. Let us put our hands together to applaud the great contributions of Dr. Kimalani Rajabhavgar. Throughout his career, Dr. Rajabhavgar has been recognized with several prestigious awards, including the Pathbreaking Research and Outstanding Technology Development Award, Agni Award for Excellence in Self-Reliance, DRDO Scientist of the Year, and Vikyan Pratibha Saman Award. His leadership and innovative contributions have greatly enhanced the indigenous defense systems of the country. Dr. NRSC, to please come on to the desk to receive his award. In recognition of his outstanding contributions to the field of space technology, particularly in remote sensing technology for geosciences, atmospheric and oceanic process studies, natural resource management for ocean and land resources, Dr. Prakash Chauhan, Director, National Remote Sensing Center, Hyderabad, is conferred the Dr. Suri Bhagavantam Scientific Excellence Award. Please come on to the days to receive the award. And for the Dr. Suri Bhagavantam Excellence Award, this honor recognizes his visionary leadership and transformative contributions in technology, financial services, and digital innovation. As the Chief Operating Officer and Chief Product Officer, of financial UNO, Ravi has driven strategic innovation across financial services, significantly impacting brokerage, wealth management. Sashi Bhushan Garu, to please come on to the desk. We have Mr. Sarat Tarantki Garu, who is going to receive the award on his behalf, as Sir is in USA right now. May I request Mr. Sharad Garu to please come on to the desk. On behalf of the organizing committee and the entire team, we take immense pleasure in extending our heartfelt appreciation to Sri Mochala Seshibhushan Garu for his outstanding contributions and exceptional services in the fields of global information technology, healthcare, and spiritual well being. Your leadership as the chairman of Rivi Group of Companies and your dedication to promoting holistic wellness through the Siddha Ashram of North America has inspired countless individuals, not only across the United States, but globally. Your efforts to integrate modern technology with ancient wisdom, reflect a vision that bridges diverse fields for the betterment of humanity. On behalf of the organizing committee, we commend you for your relentless pursuit of innovation and wish you continued success in all your future endeavors. Honorable Governor of the State of Tripura, Sri Yang Hitasenari Degaru, the Registrar of the University, Usmania University, Dr. Lakshmi Nagar, the former Director General of DRDO, and the Chairman of the Research Council at KIMS, Dr. Pujandarao Garu, the founder of the Bhagavantam Ji. Foundation, see S.B. Ramgaru, he is on the dais. The eminent people who are present here, the director of IIT Hyderabad, Professor Bhutikaru, DRDO, Sri Varapasad, Sri G.N. Rao, the eminent industrialists who are present here, Sri Subbaraji, Sri Venkat Raju, and very important person of this university, 
were the former MLC, Sri Ramchandraji, Sri Ramaraju, and uh, also Sri Nimagadagaru who just received the award and all other people who are present here, the family members of uh, uh, Professor Bhagavantam who are present here, all of you, a very good afternoon and Namaskar to you once again. Yesterday, the country has celebrated the third anniversary of the great scientist, the former president of India, Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam, all over the country. And yesterday, there was an event at Hyderabad in Shilpakala Vedika, where the Honorable Governor of Telangana, Sri Jishnudev Varmaji, has come as the chief guest and there was a big event. And today, we have in Usman University another great scientist who has laid the foundation in multiple areas, right from academics to the entire spectrum of defense technologies. Dr. Suri Bhagavantam's birth anniversary we are celebrating today. In fact, um, when Sri Espiramji, Espiramji came to me, I was not knowing where he is born and what are his uh, activities and where he is grown in the younger days and all that. So then he said that uh, he came from a village called Agripalli uh, near uh, Nujividu and uh, grown up in that, studied in Hyderabad worked in Vaisar and, and all the places which, have, which have, we have seen now. So then uh, we thought we should go to the village and see the village and do something. And then we came to know that his father has established a school, Veda Pakshala, in that village in the year 1908, 1908 which is 116 years back. And the school is still running, well maintained. And there are about 100 plus students from all over the country who are studying in all Vedas. And yesterday, in fact, the Pradhanopadhyay or Pradhan Guru of the school on 14th, he gave his speech in completely Sanskrit. And all the students who were there, they were all able to fully understand and go through it and all that. And they learned some students in each Veda and some students all four Vedas. And that is the type of a family where uh, our Dr. Suri Bhagavantam has come up. And see his journey as an eminent academician. And when he was in Andhra University, at the age of somewhere around 27, he was given honoris causa. At the age of 27, honoris causa, he was a student. And there are uh, many other things which I don't want to delve into those things. From there, he came to Usman University. From Usman University, he became the director of the India's most premier academic institute, which is Indian Institute of Science. He was there as director. And then he became the scientific advisor to the defense minister. And before that, he was there in the British High Commission, Indian, Indian High Commission in Britain, in England, London. And then he became the scientific advisor. And then he became the DG of DRDO. And as a DG of DRDO, some of the things our, uh, our former DG DRDO Sri Bhujangarawji has mentioned many of the areas of defense which are very crucial, we were not working in a focused manner at that time. There were very few labs which were there and they were not distributed in the country. Firstly, just after the China war, it was thought very clearly we should have some laboratories which are in the northern and eastern parts of the country, northeast part of the country and northern part of the country.
నూట పదిహేనవ సూర్య భగవంతం గారి యొక్క జన్మదిన సందర్భంగా ఆర్గనైజ్ చేసినటువంటి ఫౌండేషన్ మెంబర్ ఎస్పి రామ్ గారు ఈరోజు పేరిక పెన్నటువంటి పెద్దలు డాక్టర్ జి సతీష్ రెడ్డి గారు ప్రొఫెసర్ లక్ష్మీనారాయణ గారు రాజబాబు గారు డాక్టర్ ప్రకాష్ చౌహాన్ గారు రాలేదు డాక్టర్ బివి భుజంగరావు గారు ఇక్కడికి చేసినటువంటి సైంటిస్ట్ భగవంతం గారి యొక్క ఫ్యామిలీ మెంబర్స్ బిజినెస్ పీపుల్ అండ్ వెల్ విషర్స్ అందరికీ నా నమస్కారం ఈరోజు ఈ కార్యక్రమానికి నన్ను పిలిచి గౌరవించినందుకు సూర్య భగవంతం గారి యొక్క ఫౌండేషన్ సభ్యులైనటువంటి రామ్ గారికి వారి యొక్క బృందానికి ప్రత్యేకంగా అభినందనలు ధన్యవాదాలు తెలియజేస్తాను భగవంతం గారి గురించి చాలా విషయాలు చెప్పారు వారు ఎక్కడ వెళ్ళినా కానీ మౌలికమైనటువంటి సబ్జెక్ట్స్ మీదనే కాన్సన్ట్రేట్ చేశారు వారు ఉస్మానియా యూనివర్సిటీ అలూమినీగా నేను కూడా ఈ ఉస్మానియా యూనివర్సిటీ స్టూడెంట్గా ఎంతో గర్వపడుతున్నాను ఇండిపెండెన్స్ వచ్చిన తర్వాత ఈ యొక్క యూనివర్సిటీకి మొట్టమొదటి తెలుగు వైస్ ఛాన్సలర్ సూరి భగవంతం గారు వారు ఇక్కడికి ఈ వైస్ ఛాన్సలర్ అయిన తర్వాత అనేక మందిని డిఫరెంట్ ఏరియాస్ నుండి తీసుకొచ్చి ఇక్కడ ఉండేటువంటి డిపార్ట్మెంట్స్ అన్నిటినీ కూడా ఎంకరేజ్ చేసి ముందుకు నడిపించినటువంటి వారు వారు ఉన్నప్పుడే ఇక్కడ కానీ ఆంధ్ర యూనివర్సిటీలో కానీ స్పెసిఫిక్గా కొన్ని డిపార్ట్మెంట్ మీద కాన్సన్ట్రేట్ చేసి వాటిని డెవలప్ చేశారు అస్ట్రానమీ డిపార్ట్మెంటు జియో ఫిజిక్స్ డిపార్ట్మెంటు ఓషియానాలజీ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఇటువంటి వాటిని వారు ప్రత్యేకంగా శ్రద్ధ పెట్టి కృషి చేశారు ఈరోజు రంగారెడ్డి జిల్లాలో ఉండేటువంటి రంగాపూర్ అబ్జర్వేటరీ ఏదైతే ఉందో ఇబ్రాహీంపట్నం దగ్గర ఉన్నటువంటిది అది వారు ఉన్నప్పుడు మొదలుపెట్టినటువంటిది అంతకుముందు ఒక చిన్న దీంట్లో మన లాల్ బంగ్లా అని చెప్పి బేగంపేటలో ఉండేది అక్కడ నుండి అది అక్కడికి షిఫ్ట్ చేసి దాన్ని పెద్ద ఎత్తున తీసుకురావటం జరిగింది అంటే కొన్ని విషయాలు సామాన్య ప్రజలకి అర్థం కావు ఈ సైన్స్ దేనికి పనికి వస్తుంది అనేటువంటిది కానీ అస్ట్రానమీ అస్ట్రానమీ యొక్క దాని యొక్క ఇంపాక్ట్ అల్టిమేట్గా డెవలప్మెంట్ మీద తర్వాత వెదర్ మీద వెదర్ రిపోర్ట్స్ మీద వీ దాని ద్వారా మనం ఎట్లా ప్రొటెక్ట్ చేసుకోవాలి ఎట్లా దాని అడ్వాంటేజ్ తీసుకోవాలి అనేటువంటిది ఆ యొక్క అబ్జర్వేటర్స్ మీద అబ్జర్వేట్ అస్ట్రానమీ దాని మీద ఉంటుంది ఎందుకంటే నేను రీసెంట్గా అలీం కృష్ణ రెడ్డి గారు అనరబుల్ శ్రీ సతీష్ రెడ్డి గారు రిజిస్ట్రార్ సాబ్ ఆఫ్ ఉస్మానియా యూనివర్సిటీ డాక్టర్ రామ్ డాక్టర్ భుజంగరావు సాబ్ ఆల్ అమిరెంట్ పులీ సైంటిస్ట్ అసెంబ్ల్ హియర్ సుబ్బారావు గారు as well as uh, all the other awardees professor murthy and others my colleagues from nrsc colleagues from usmania university ladies and gentlemen good afternoon to each one of you first and foremost let me thank the foundation to the dr suri bhagwantam foundation dr ram sir as well as professor satish reddy garu for selecting 
me for this very important excellence award which has been set up in the fond memory of the great scientific leader Dr. Suri Bhagwantam Ji. I am really honored and privileged to be part of this uh, function as well as to get connected with the, the strong legacy of Professor Suri Bhagwantam in terms of his uh, fundamental research which he started along with Professor C. V. Raman when he was his student at Calcutta. In fact, in our in my personal journey also, you know, many of the concepts where Dr. Raman and young Dr. Suri Bhagavatam were working on the scattering of light and its applications for various spectroscopic, you know, uh, research. Uh, I personally did, uh, you know, my PhD on the use of satellites in terms of detecting the scattering of light within the ocean column. So you will, you can imagine that the satellites, they operate at an altitude around 500 to 600 kilometers and using this concepts of scattering of light, not only from the atmosphere, but within the ocean column, we could retrieve microscopic information about the phytoplankton. So this is the kind of fundamental physics they have developed in terms of scattering theory. Phytoplankton are microorganisms which grow in the ocean column and they are primarily responsible for photosynthesis in ocean and starting of the entire life cycle starting from phytoplankton to zooplankton and the small larvae and fishery. So entire ecosystem in ocean column is governed by these phytoplankton and today using space technology we are able to map the abundance of phytoplankton in the ocean column. Not only they provide the food chain for the entire ocean uh, species, but they also are very important entities for absorbing the atmospheric carbon by doing photosynthesis and permanently removing it and then settling into the ocean floor. So, there are studies done that if, what if, if in next 15 days, if all phytoplankton of the entire 70 percent of geographic area of this planet dies, let's say, let's assume, what will happen? The temperature of the earth will rise 3 to 4 degrees Celsius immediately because of the build up of the excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So all these concepts today which we are applying, you know, the fundamental aspects of these theories were done by giants like Dr. Suri Bhagavantam and then of course all of you have also narrated his excellent contributions in crystallography as well as, you know, the contributions in terms of developing various defense laboratories across the country. So, it's a really great honor and privilege for me to be part of this function and getting this excellence award. For this, I am really thankful and I wish that the legacy of Professor Surya Bhagavantam continues and it will inspire lot many of young personal, young scientists and researchers so that they can excel in their own fields of specific activities and as we have been told by our Honorable Governor sir, as well as Satish Sati Garu sir, that India, the next 25 years belongs to India and as we are looking to become a developed country, this is the young dream, you know, the next 25, India is having the youngest manpower, you know, we have that, what we call as the dividend of, you know, the young country and this next 25 years, all our youngsters with our experience and guidance, I am sure that all of you will excel and make our country the one of the most, you know, powerful as well as advanced country in times to come. Thank you very much for your kind support and this opportunity. Hey everyone, that's it. And other dignitaries on the stage. So this is an honor for me, not being from the core uh, scientific background, but also having come from the engineering and applied engineering to building global economic systems, applications of science and technology for different problem solving. And today, our group of companies is focusing on solving the problems that are not typically the problems that are defined and given to us by the Western economies. 
but instead we want to identify the problems of power and we want to solve the problems in the way that is most suited for us. And this would require a lot of repurposing the technology, the science, the applications, the economics, and the processes, methodologies that we le that we learned, and how do we really bring and not westernize but modernize the Indian systems and create and inspire the spirit of innovation. The entrepreneurship is nothing but somebody from great man said that it is the antaprerna, the inspiration that comes from within is entrepreneurship. And that is something that we have seen in the entire story and articulation and experiences of Dr. Suri Pagwantham in today's. And to me, he is not just an inspiration, but he is a subject by itself. And taking that inspiration, we should continue to cherish, not only through his innovations uh, in science and technology, but also thinking fearlessly and implementing things in a short period of time and building that kind of uh, resilience, the ultimate power. Those are the things that we need to do beyond very common science and technology, but also in economics, in health, in life sciences, and being able to create manufacturing in our own country for our own reasons. So that in every aspect, not only just in the science technology difference, but also today we are fighting multiple wars at the same time. The warfare, the war fields, the methods of war, everything changed. There's economic war, there is a culture war, and there is a war in every different aspects. So that would require to really wire ourselves. In the last two decades, most of us, I have seen personally in my life growing towards what the problems and the opportunities that the Western world has presented us to really learn and uh, apply and solve the problems and gain the abilities. But now it is time for us to really look at our own problems in the global south. And for India to really, really raise up to the occasion, not only being sufficient for ourselves, but also in a position to be a leader for the other global south countries who are in similar situations. Thank you so much. भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड पुत्र बंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तब शुभ नामे जागे तब शुभ आशीष मागे तब जय गाथा जय जन मंगल नायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे